Okay, guys. Um, this is first day of review. Uh, this is the basic anatomy review. Um, if you feel that you, and, and this is mostly, let's see, yes, today is just simply going to be drawings, my drawings. Um, then I'm going to uh, add, probably tomorrow, I will have those same drawings, and I'm going to add all the ultrasound images that go along with it. So you can kind of get, you can jump from the drawing to the ultrasound image. Um, so what I really want you to concentrate on is not simply saying, yes, this is a picture of the aorta, this is a picture of the IVC and its branches. You have to understand where the blood is traveling, why it is traveling in that direction, whether it is oxygenated, deoxygenated, whether it is filled with nutrients from the, ab uh, from the intestines, um, without understanding the trajectory, the, the, the direction everything is going and why it's going, then you'll have a much harder time understanding disease states such as uh, portal hypertension, why we see the things we do. Um, I will reiterate, guys, we do not, we are not picture takers. We don't press buttons and just take a picture and keep moving. We investigate, we have to investigate if you're not investigating, you're not doing your job. If you're simply taking your standard pictures, you're not doing your job. Go to x-ray school. That's, that, that's what you want to do. And, um, I'm not being a jerk. I'm just, just making a point. Um, all right. Well, I finally dis <laughs> discovered which programs are, are causing problems with my... Um, sketchbook where I can't get my sketchbook over on the big screen where I want it to be. Um, I discovered it's Zoom itself. So I turned Zoom on. Guess what just broke on me or it crashed the sketchbook. So um, I don't know why that all of a sudden uh, started happening. But anyway, that's my technical issue, not yours. So let's get this going. Let's hopefully I share the screen this time. And hopefully you are looking at a very basic picture of the heart. So, oh, a little bit of, it's funny how that get in there. Oh, does not matter, does not matter. So, I know we're, I know we're in abdomen, in abdomen vascular right now, but understanding the entire circulatory system, I think is worth reviewing and worth going back over. So I've written over here right lung and left lung. So this is the chest, okay? The line down here is the diaphragm separating the chest from the abdomen. You can see that I've drawn uh, one, two, three, four, five, six holes. These circles here are basically holes, right? This is how blood, these six holes, usually six, usually four over here, two over here. Well, yeah, yeah, two over here, four over here. Um, this is how blood gets into the heart. All right, this is, if this is right lung, this is right, and this is right. If this is left, this is left, and this is left. Midline of the body, um, Right about there, more or less. I'm not an echo tech, but more or less. Most of our heart is on the left side. Less of it is on the right side of the body. IVC is over on this side, right? Mm -hmm. 
and aorta is over on this side of the body. So IVC on the right, aorta on the left. Bunch of the messes I've made here. Okay. Now I said right, right. This is an atrium. This is the ventricle. This is the left ventricle, right, or, and then the left atrium. Okay, so right ventricle, or right, right atrium, left atrium. Atriums receive blood. They are relatively weak. The, musc the musculature around the atriums are a lot weaker than the ventricles. All of that out of there because we're going to do some more adding. Okay, good. Okay, it's actually driving me crazy. Let's see if I can. Hmm, I have another layer open. Well, does not matter, guys. So I will leave it. Okay, so. I mentioned the hall, the holes are blood coming in. So let's add the next, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So blood coming in. Remember I said IVC. SVC, superior vena cava. So that's how blood from the rest of our body, other than the lungs, our arms, our head, our abdomen, our legs, are all coming back to the heart via the SVC and the IVC. So that is writing. And the next layer, I think this is the right layer. Yes, okay. So, blood has entered the atrium. It is pumped into the ventricle. From the ventricle, the muscles are stronger down here because this ventricle has to pump blood. To the lungs. Everything so far is blue because that's how everyone in the world depicts deoxygenated blood. So it's going out to the lungs in order to become oxygenated. Let me get this next layer in. And I'm actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and leave these in, but these are veins. These are Pulmon oh, I didn't really <laughs> okay well, let's uh, let's actually take the time to, to um, do some writing here because I kind of forgot um, pulmonary artery comes out of here and it splits into the right and left branches so that is pulmonary artery, left, right, right, left. These are pulmonary veins, usually two on the, on the uh, left here and two on the right. So they are oxygenated. Now in the rest of the body, in the rest of the body, arteries are red and veins are blue. This is the only change uh, uh, from that. This is the only place where the artery is blue and the veins are red. Well, then why, why don't we just call this the pulmonary vein up here and call these pulmonary arteries because you know uh, arteries are red and veins are blue, right? Well, the definition of an artery and vein is what it's doing in the direction of blood. 
arteries take blood away from the heart. And so since we're going away from the heart, it's an artery. Even though it's deoxygenated, it is still an artery. Blood coming back in from the lungs is oxygenated, but it is blood coming back to the heart. Veins go back to the heart. The only exception to that rule, let's see, I don't want to say that stuff. Um, the only exception to the rule of veins going back to the heart is the portal system. There's actually another, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny portal system in your brain, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So the, the portal system does not bring blood directly back to the heart, but it is still considered a vein system. Actually, the veins, uh, there's like this IBC, is considered a central venous system, and the portal is the portal venous system. So there is a, a little bit of a distinction there in, in the name. Let's see. So, okay, so we have, we have blood going out, oxygenated, coming back in. And let's add another layer. Uh, boing, there we go. Okay, well. Not much of a layer. We now have in this left atrium, we have oxygenated blood. And that, of course, is now pumped into the ventricle. Now, this ventricle is really strong. This, this ventricle is stronger than this ventricle because now it is pumping the entire body, the entire body, except for the lungs is perfused with blood from this ventricle. And so, of course, we're going to go, we learned last semester how the, uh, it goes to aortic arch, innominate artery, and that's going to split into the carotid artery, the, uh, the vertebral artery, the subclavian artery is going to go out and feed your arms, same thing over here, the carotid artery and the subclavian artery all going out and going down here and then into the abdomen as well. And let's see, what do I, I have another layer here, I can't remember. Oh, all right. And this is everything that I've, I have pre-drawn, it's kind of, time consuming, so it's not worth drawing while you guys watch and wait for me to finish drawing. I'm just going to quickly add in some organs here that are going to be fed by the aorta. And so, of course, that's liver, right kidney, left kidney, spleen, pancreas, and oh gosh, let's just let's just for the heck of it, really quick, we can add a um, let's see, the esophagus is going to come down right about here. Stomach, duodenum, intestines. Uh, let's just erase that because that's going to get ugly fast. Um, and of course, it's going to continue outside of the abdomen going into the pelvis, feeding the pelvic organs, and it's gonna pass the pelvis as well uh, via the iliac arteries and down into the legs. So let's get rid of this. Oh shit. <laughs> um, That is not drawn to scale. Actually, nothing is going to be drawn to scale from here on out, so just be forewarned. Okay, so, and of course, just, just notice, um, you know, notice that the, the heart lays on its side. That way the IVC doesn't have to go through, and, and even this is not accurate. I could probably, why is that? Still. Okay, I'm 
just on the wrong layer. Anyway, um, this IVC here uh, goes pretty much through the diaphragm directly in. It can't, you, you can't have it go through a lot of, of lung space because that would mess with the, the pressure, uh, the gradient pressure uh, as we breathe in, breathe out. Um, so anyways, uh, the IVC goes pretty much directly in as it, as it passes through the diaphragm. Uh, and the aorta is behind the um, heart as it comes in. And so that is why, I'll just draw a real quick comparison of the two vessels as they're coming across. I guess I need to be on this level. There we go. Two vessels, here's kind of what an IVC. What it looked like as it's crossing the diaphragm and going pretty much direct, directly into, this would be the right atrium. And of course, right ventricle is over here somewhere, but a right atrium, uh, that's how the IVC looks. But the aorta, Let's just, we'll just go ahead and draw the aorta in the same plane, even though we know it is not in the same plane. The aorta is coming along. And just does that as it passes through the diaphragm. Ever notice that? IVC comes up, the aorta, well, that's because the aorta has to come down behind, there's the rest of the heart, it has to come behind the heart. That's why it has that appearance down there. Okay, let's get rid of all that. and. Let's start drawing our, our vessel here. So, I, you know what, how about this? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna draw the whole thing and then straight. Heart comes down, 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 down down. Still can't draw straight. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sorry about that, but I can't abide by that being that messy. So let me okay. drawing on this pad. Drawing down is so stinking difficult. Okay, aorta doesn't normally have that much of a wiggle to it, but that's okay. I'm gonna erase a little bit. I'm gonna erase a little bit here, mm, yeah, right about there. I'm gonna erase a little bit right about here, and let's see. We'll erase a little bit here. And here and spot in there and there. And you, know, you guys should be thinking about what is he what is he doing? What's what's his plan? And then one over here. One is it was. Okay. So why did I do all that? Um and so the, the celiac axis usually comes straight up or something like that, but I can't really draw straight at us because it's out of plane, but also I'll draw it, I'll draw it kind of coming down. And then, shoot, I missed my, let's do that one more time, one more time. Coming down, and I'm gonna kind of go off here. And then celiac trunk, celiac access, whatever you wanna call it is fine by me. And this one's usually quite curvy right there. Uh, and let's, so of course, um, you guys know what we're drawing here. It's the celiac axis. And you know the two major arteries are what, say it to yourselves, splenic artery and uh, common hepatic. Oh, 
Okay. So, as we know, oh, and you know what? We could add one more. Let's let's take a little eraser. Take a little eraser and erase uh, right there. It, it kind of doesn't matter, but that's what, that's just where we'll put it. And we're going to put another little branch. What's this little branch? I'm looking horrible. What's that little branch? Hmm. Left. Hmm. So that, that looks a little that little looks a little peculiar, doesn't it? Let's let's do something. Let's erase up there and this is why I drew the heart out so you didn't have to sit there and watch me mess. I'm just gonna we'll draw this guy out longer. Not necessarily in this exact configuration, but you get the idea. So as you guys know, splenic artery here. It is obviously bringing blood to the spleen. It also has many branches feeding, well actually it has branches feeding the stomach, which is in this area. And of course, what travels with the splenic artery and the splenic vein? The pancreas. We're not going to draw that in right now, but the pancreas travels with this. So the splenic artery also feeds the pancreas. It's called the splenic artery because that's where it's going to. So then off in this direction, we have the hepatic artery, of course. And, um, oh, what's this? What's this one? Goes down to the head of the pancreas. That must be the gastroduodenal artery. Oops. <laughs> or GAD. Gastroduodenal artery. Um, and so it's, com it's common hepatic, I'm sorry. Yeah, common hepatic, hep hepatic artery proper. Probably got those two backwards. I never, honestly, I never worry about that. Um, and then once it gets, as soon as it gets to the liver, it's going to split. It's probably going to split even before it gets inside of the liver into the, uh, for the most part, the right and left hepatic arteries. There's also a branch that goes into the caudate lobe, and there, there's, there could be other branches, but the two main are the right and left hepatic arteries. So, and we know that uh, that is one of two sources of blood for the liver. It's the oxygenated only source of blood to the liver. Okay, and then we have, oh, this is gonna be brutal to draw. Then we have um, another, artery that travels along on top for a while and branches off. We don't, we don't see it go off to the side very often. We just, we're only able to follow it till maybe about here and then we usually lose it. So let's just kind of finish like that. And of course you guys know that that is the SMA and it is feeding, the SMA feeds for the most part right sided in intestines that says intestines right colon ascending colon right side of the transverse colon small intestines everything in this side is fed by the sma um since we're talking sma we'll skip down to here and a lot of you have found the ima and of course that goes off to this side and that feeds the left intestines. The left side of, of intestines are fed by the IMA. Right. 
It's too messy. Okay. We could see the SMA for a short while. What branches off just below the level of the SMA? It branches off. So it is, we're going to see one here. And we're going to see one here. This one likes to kind of come up and then down and then across. Comes up and then down. I don't know why it goes up. I honestly don't, but I don't, I do know why it goes down. Anyway, um, these are the renal arteries, right? So this is going off to the left kidney and right kidney. It has to go, it has to dip down because it's going to go underneath the IVC, which we'll draw in later. Okay. Two more arteries we actually usually do not see, but they're worth noting. I mean, there's plenty of arteries. There's lumbar arteries, plenty a lot. There's a lot of little arteries coming off here that we're, we don't see. These are the only two worth noting. What are these? Think about it, guys, before I say it. Think about it. Anyway, they're weird. They go all the way down. In fact, they'll go all the way down into the pelvis. And on some people, about half the population will go outside the pelvis, right? So these are gonadal arteries or ovarian arteries or testicular arteries. But gonadal is the obvious, obvious catch-all for that. So those are gonadals. Um, but like I said, we don't see these very often. And then branching off down at the bottom, of course, as we know, are the iliacs. Okay. Now I know I'm going pretty slow. Of course, you always have the option on YouTube to hit that 15 second button a bunch of times and zoom up a little or zoom forward a little bit. Ooh, those boys got a big heart and a small body. I guess I uh, could have used more space. That's that's okay. All right, let me, I'm going to pause here for a second. Okay. So obviously a little sloppy today, but um, it's almost 10 o'clock and I I've already got to start thinking about heading in um, about a half an hour. So, um, quickly, we're going to start with the number one, number one, well, let's say number one, the left atrium sends blood to the left ventricle, which sends blood to the aorta goes to the aortic arch, feeds the head, the arms, goes down the arch behind the heart um, and into the abdomen. It is now the abdominal aorta. Um, and like I said, this person has some kind of disease that makes his abdominal aorta tiny. But anyway, um, and oxygenated blood feeds all the organs, feeds the legs, feeds the gonads. All right. So I've just drawn in a real quick primitive liver over here. I'm sure most of you understood that that was supposed to be a liver. Um, now we're gonna add more to it here. Now I didn't give myself a whole lot of room on this left lobe, but um, that is just the way it is. The IVC, well, let's draw the basic IVC first. Um, no, no, we'll draw the, we'll go ahead and start with the, these guys here. Of course, you guys know what these are, right? As I draw usually three, although I recently figured out that I have four, I mean, four major, I mean, 
Everyone has little branches, but I have four major. Everyone knows what these are, right? What are they? They are draining blood from the liver to the IVC to the heart. And of course, we are talking about the hepatic veins. So that is a right, middle, and left hepatic veins. Not particularly well drawn, but that is just the way it's going to be. Now, just as a quick aside, there are some people who only have this, their IVC is missing. Well, you say, well, how is that possible? You can't, you know, how would you drain? How would you drain the entire body back to the heart with the IVC missing? Well, it's missing only in this section. And what happens is it could be flipped over to the wrong side, it comes up the wrong side, it's, it's a mess, but this is possible. So this, these, these guys will grow almost directly into the heart if needed, if the IVC is for some reason missing. But that is a rare occurrence. Let's continue on with our IVC. And once again, I have to draw a straight line, straight down. Ugh. Now, the accuracy here is a little bit off. These guys are actually yeah, closer together. But, oh well. So let's, let's zoom in. There's not a whole lot of branches we need to worry about. We've already talked about the right, middle, and left hepatic veins. Remember on our screen, it is upside down. So on our, on our ultrasound screen, these appear from the bottom of the screen and they seem to be pointing up. Well, that's because we look at it upside down. Now let's go ahead, get rid of a, uh, I'm gonna get rid of a little bit right here and a little bit right here. And we're gonna draw in a little something, something there. And a little something, something here. I'm gonna go over. and under. All right, you guys know what this is. Whoops. Over and under. Now let's get my, let's get my old, my other color back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't we keep the color that I asked for before? Okay, so let's just kind of we'll continue this. We'll continue with this color, because this is, this is deoxygenated blood, right? So IVC is coming down, and we're going to go ahead and fill that in. I know it's a mess. I can fix that in a second. But um, why is it deoxygenated? Well, because, of course, these are the left renal vein. Blood had gone into the, into the uh, kidney, and now it's coming back out of the kidney. So artery in, vein out, and this is the right renal vein, and of course, the same thing, artery in, vein out. Um, notice that this renal artery goes underneath the IVC. Arteries, even these little, and these are pretty small, these renal arteries are pretty small, but even a little, little one should go behind the vein, otherwise it can crush the vein and cause some problems. So if you ever see an artery go over the vein, it is a reportable change. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of little things in the vascular system can be different and we don't have to report it. Artery over the vein in this case, it is reportable. Let's see, what else do we have to worry about? Oh, right, 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 right. We need to add, uh, let's do a couple of erase, erase marks here. Um, one there, and then one here. Oh, dang it, I'm on the wrong level. There we go. Okay. 
So what are these? What are these guys? They kind of, they go all the way down. They head down just like this one headed down, right? So this would be the right gonadal vein. And then this one up here, that's the left gonadal vein, right? Correct? <laughs> um, L left gonadal. That comes up into, remember what? <sighs> what did I do wrong? It's pretty obvious what I did wrong. Pretty obvious what I did wrong here. Let me just do this. Okay. That was just a silly mistake. Left now, it's left. Go nod. When my wife is in college. One of the um, they they made an inter intramural um, team. And they called them the Nads, and no one really understood why they were called the Nads until they were cheering for them. And it was go Nads, go Nads, go. Nads. <laughs> but I love stupid. Um, okay. So um, IVC, of course, left gonadal vein, uh, left gonadal vein, right gonadal vein, left renal vein, right renal vein, three hepatic veins. All their purpose is to bring blood back to the heart, deoxygenated blood back to the heart. All right. Okay. Then there's the portal system. Do I dare draw? I'll, I'll go ahead. I'm going to draw this in right in front of you guys. You could watch me suffer through this. Now, I think a lot of you, and, and this is not a this is not a me pointing at you saying you have problems. It's, this is this is difficult. It's three dimensions, and I did not get this overnight. All right. There are two veins that come in. Of course, you guys know this. This is coming, coming from the splenic. So the splenic vein comes in. Of course, this guy is, what is he under? Underneath the pancreas. So splenic vein. So you can imagine there's a pancreas going all the way down to here. Here, I'll just quickly, just for the heck of it, let's do uh, There's my pancreas, right? Okay. Oh, this is getting messy in here. Well, it's messy on our screen too, so that's what we have to deal with. Um, SMA, notice that the SMA is coming right around that same, all in the same point. So sometimes when you look below the pancreas, you see the round, in other words, cut off in this direction, round SMA. And sometimes you don't, and that's just because the SMA takes off the aorta just a little bit lower than other people. Then there's another vein that um, is more or less on this side, this side of the aorta. That's gonna come down. And here's a little hint, it goes off to the side like that. It goes off to this side. So what that, what's, what's this vein? This vein is the superior mesenteric vein, all right? We have the SMA here, superior mesenteric vein here. Sometimes they're very close to each other. Sometimes they're practically on top of each other. That's okay. But usually it's, it's SMA to the patient's left, right on our screen, but patient's left, 
and then patients to the patient's right is SMV. And of course, blood flow is going back up. Except we're not gonna we're not gonna color it some kind of shade of blue. I guess I regret using purple up there in the heart. Let's do let's do really purple color. Super purple. And of course, what is this? Everyone knows what this is. It's the confluence. It's the confluence of two major veins. And from there, of course, we are now going to go at a, what, what degree? More or less what degree? It's not perfect, but 45 degree angle. Now here's the thing, when I draw a picture of it, yeah, it's 45 degrees. And when I tell you to hold your transducer, it's 45 degrees. When you look at it on the screen, Let's just pretend it's over here. When we look at it on the screen, it does this. And you're like, well, it, that, doesn't, that doesn't match what, what I'm seeing on this image that you're drawing. It doesn't seem to match the 45 degrees that I have with my transducer holding in the epigastrium. That's because it's simply going from a higher point to a lower point, a more superior point to a more inferior point. That's why it dives like that. That doesn't mean it's not at a 45 degrees going more inferior to more superior. Was I saying inferior? I hope I said, I hope I said before guys, superior to, I mean, anterior to inferior, anterior to inferior, but it's still traveling inferior to superior. <laughs> Inferior to superior, anterior to, to, to posterior. So it gets a little, a little confusing. But okay, so let's let's continue on with our. I really wish I didn't have to choose a color every time. Here's our portal vein coming up from from there. Okay, so. Is the portal vein going back to the heart? No, it's going to the liver. Pretty much right at the, where the liver begins, it splits into the right, and the right's gonna have a couple of branches, so we'll go ahead and draw a couple of branches. And we see that a lot. And then the left, and left is a sharp turn, and that's gonna be the little man. I'm not gonna draw him accurately, but you know the little man. And so that is how the rest of this is going to appear. All right. So, why did I make this purple? Well, because if I made it blue, it'd be too confusing. It is, Lordy, 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 okay. It is deoxygenated. Remember, this blood came from the aorta through the SMA and also the SMV to our intestines. Oxygen was released to the intestines to feed the intestines. They, have, they are living tissue, they need oxygen. But then, uh, so it's deoxygenated blood as it leaves the intestines, goes into the SMV. But it's also filled with nutrients. And so we've just decided to say, you know what, we'll make this a different color. The splenic vein, that's deoxygenated, but 
eh, it's not exactly taking nutrients from the intestines, because we are talking about the spleen, but the spleen does break down stuff as well. It breaks down red blood cells. So red blood cell parts and pieces are traveling up to the liver as well. So we make this purple on the way up. Now inside, so remember now we have, we have an artery, let's, let's do a little dark, dark red here just to kind of prove a little point. We have an artery coming in, also feeding, and that branches as well. That's the hepatic artery. And the portal vein, they're both feeding the liver. Now that has consequences with cirrhosis of the liver. In cirrhosis, the liver just becomes fibrotic. It doesn't want to deal with the blood flow. It, it, it's having a hard time. It's basically, it's like a filter that's clogged, mostly clogged. And so if you have a filter that's mostly clogged, if you force water into it, you'll, you might get water through it. But if you just let water build up, well, then you're going to have a backup. And so that's what's happening with portal hypertension. Artery is forced into the liver. It's a high pressure vessel. It has the heart working for it, pumping blood into the liver. The portal system is a low pressure system, far lower pressure. And so that's kind of like, that's, that's the difference between, oh, you know what, if, if it's a coffee maker, you have a, a Keurig, works under pressure. It forces water through the coffee maker and gives you uh, supposedly a richer coffee. Whereas a drip coffee maker is more like the portal system. That's just kind of it's low pressure, and, and if you can imagine how easy it would be if your grains of coffee for some reason were too thick or whatever, uh, that your coffee maker would overflow. And so that's what happens with portal hypertension is the arterial blood's going in, but the portal blood is having a harder time. It could be so bad that the blood goes backwards. But let's hold off on portal hypertension and other disease states for another day. Now, I think the only thing I want to add here is, let's see, let's start with red arrows. Just remember, blood is going out through the arteries, feeding all the organs feeding the gonads, feeding the legs and the pelvis. Let's see, feeding the, 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 both the, the, the kidneys, okay? IVC is the venous system. And that, of course, blood is now going the other direction. Technically speaking, and we don't need to speak in these terms, but just so you know, Proximal in a venous system technically is at the most furthest from the heart. So technically speaking, this is proximal down here, like all the way down to the foot would be proximal vein. But we don't need to think in that way. We could, we could always cause, we could always uh, say that the foot is distal and, and the groin is proximal or, you know. But in any case, just so you know. All right, so blood is always going back up. It's going up the gonadal veins, up the gonadal veins, back from the kidneys, um, and back to the heart. And for a moment, I even got myself confused. I was like, okay, now what about the SMV? Well, SMV, superior mesenteric vein, um, purple, right? Purple's going back up, SMV down here, splenic vein here, main portal vein here, going into the liver, into the liver, 
It's going up, but it's not going back to the heart. It is a portal system. It is a completely separate system. Blood that does make it into the liver, let's say if assume we're a healthy person, and all of the arterial and portal blood make it into the system, then we also have blood leaving the liver via the hepatic veins. And, of course, yank. into the heart, and into the right atrium, left atrium, through the pulmonary artery, out to the lungs, back to the pulmonary veins, to the, uh, the left atrium, left ventricle, into the aorta, and then back all over again. One continuous cycle. Okay. Now, I know for a lot of you, that was probably ho-hum. I've already learned all this. But I do think it was still worthwhile just reminding ourselves. And like I said at the beginning, if you just name, if you could just name a vessel without knowing what that vessel does, that you're not even halfway there as far as being an effective technologist. And so I really want you guys to think about that at all times. Oh God, please tell me I'm sharing the correct screen and everything. Well, we'll find out. I'll, I'll review this before, before I send it, before I, before I publish it. Anyways, guys, questions, questions, questions. Always send me questions. I am happy to answer them. And I don't know how to, sh I don't know how to shut this down all of a sudden. All right. Ah. Uh.